Okay, guys. So uh, today's lesson is about uh, uh, when you want to migrate your project from monolith to microservices. What are the considerations and what are the aspects that you need to take into consideration? So uh, you know the microservice nowadays is kind of like a hype. So everybody wants to port or migrate their existing uh, architectures into microservices. So we'll analyze and see whether you know your project, your particular project, would fit into microservices. So uh, these are the topics that we would be covering today. So we'll first of all identify what is a monolith, because you will be you would be like you know porting your monolith into microservices, and uh, uh, we'll identify uh, when to use microservices, whether your particular project is uh, you know is ready to move into the microservices architecture, and. Uh, then uh, if it is feasible then where are you should start you know what is the starting point of this migration and most importantly the migration patterns you know this in our software industry we are using most of the you know the patterns like you know architecture patterns design patterns so there are certain migration patterns from monolith to microservices as well which ensures that whatever the tasks or whatever the the migration that we are doing would end up successfully okay so we'll move on so uh, what is a monolith so monolith as in defining here it's a it is a one unit of deployment so what do you mean by this one unit of deployment so assume that you have let's say a web project uh, you know runs on top of set of dlls and set of uh, html files so one unit of deployment deployment means that whenever that you are releasing a new version or you are releasing uh, you know a patch that you have to deploy the full set of uh, of your DLLs. I mean, you cannot like you know deploy only like uh, two or three DLLs and make sure that the system would work. It might work, it might not work, but you cannot ensure that. So that's why it says the one unit of deployment. So you have to deploy your full set of as it is. Maybe like you know your DLLs or other components, jar files, WAR files, maybe like you know and database scripts uh, and whatnot, everything. So. Uh, that is the definition of uh, monolith. So it's mainly, you know, tie up with deployment. So keep that thing in your mind. So uh, in monolith, uh, we are basically, they, it, it has like uh, two partitions, uh, the technical partition monolith and uh, the domain partition monolith. So technically partition monolith is, uh, is this. So another nice word for this, I, I think most of you guys know, is as the layered architecture. So in here, there are, you know, uh, uh, clearly uh, separated uh, responsibilities in each of these layer. So in the presentation layer is the, you know, the mainly uh, the UI UX components would go in there where the users would uh, interact with the uh, presentation layer. Business layer is the layer that you wrap up all your business logics and, uh, you know, come up with set of services or set of DLLs. And uh, persistent layer and data layer is mainly to do with uh, the data access and data transformations and all that. So this is the uh, technically partition monolith. So if you want to do any change, I mean, let's have an example that you are come up with a new set of tables and you need to support some uh, new UI changes into that. So this, uh, this particular change would propagate like, you know, from top to bottom. You have to uh, do it, uh, you have to, uh, uh, change, I mean, make the change in the presentation layer and you have to make the change in the business layer, pers persistent data access to database. So change would propagate. So the other uh, part, uh, the uh, partition or other type of uh, monolith is a domain partition monolith. In here, there are no such layers as uh, I described above. So instead of that, we have a set of modules. Let's say for an example, invoice module or order module or billing module such as that, but you know, maybe like inside this uh, one particular module, you have everything like, you know, you have the data access logic, you have the business logic, you have the UI components and everything. So the, ad the, the one advantage of using in this, uh, uh, this domain partition monolith is that, you know, whenever that you want to do a change, you might, you know, want to do change only in the database, if it is a database change and only in the, the only in that particular module. And one disadvantage would be, like uh, let's that, that I mean in uh, in a system that you have common functionality such as you know security, uh, the exception handling, the logging, and all that. So you have to uh, have you know you have to share that uh, whatever those components within uh, all these modules. 
like you know shared components or shared dls so you know whatever the based on the uh, technology that you are using so these are the you know the two main parts of uh, monoliths so uh, if you move ahead uh, you know this monolith is it bad like you know whenever that you know, the, in, 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 in in software design uh, context or in the software design field nowadays whenever somebody says okay i'm using monolith it considered as you know you are like a, you know you are like from a jurassic age is it bad so that is the question that we need to answer here is using a monolith is bad no because a monolith is i mean that is something that we have used like you know for many decades because all, before all these you know new shiny technologies came up through this i would say you know, this uh, all these distributed architectures came up through monolith i mean monolith is the thing that we have lived in so many decades so uh, the thing is that when to use uh, monolith right and uh, so the first point that we are having here is uh, if you are a startup you know if you are a startup so what is the most important thing in a startup the most important thing is the product because you know your investors are waiting your clients are waiting and you need to push this uh, your product to the market as soon as possible maybe because of uh, even maybe because of the competition right so if you are trying to do something like you know microservices and all these distributed you know nice architectures you might be you know like you 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 lose your focus you use you use you lose your focus from developing what the product needs into the developing uh, all the these shiny technologies right so if you are a startup it is not a very good idea to start up with the microservices so you should use monolith right i mean i'm i'm not saying that in this all the case but most of the cases right and if you need just a crud operation so i mean let's say one example that uh, your manager comes and say okay i have like four tables so i need to have crud operations in this four table so what you should do is you know there are like you know uh, frameworks are there the scaffolding frameworks are there the code generators are there the ui generators you know there are nice frameworks like this you, you should use that kind of a framework and uh, build your crud operations with the ui uh, for that kind of a solution i mean uh, i mean i have seen that you know, some people are using uh, microservices just to perform crud operations so these kind of situations are called entity trap right i mean you should not expose your entities through microservices i mean microservices microservices are much more than that right if you want to do only that thing there are some easy to use technologies and easy to use tools out there to get it done okay so the next fact is the limited functional application so if you if you are sure that uh, whenever that you are de uh, deploying an on premise application your number of users would not grow let's say more than 100 users and you know it's hardly that new functionality would get add on so uh, if there if the situation is like that and if there is no requirement of such as you know scaling elasticity and all that so then it is uh, better to go ahead with a monolith right and the other aspect is poc or pre sales right uh, so i mean you don't want to like you know do a poc with you know huge uh, architecture uh, blunder right or complex architecture if if you want to poc just the functionality and uh, you are not sure about the future of the application i mean you don't know where this would end up so in in these kind of situations is better to uh, start with the monolith because it's so easy right and you can focus only on your functionality and deliver your product to uh, the organization or to your clients so what is a microservice so as defined in here it's an independently deployable services that work together services or service that work together model around a business domain so this is the most important thing in here independently deployable service right so if you remember when we are talking about our uh, uh, our monolith it is not independent deployable right i mean it is like it is you have to deploy the whole uh, i mean all of your files together right in uh, microservices the most important thing is that you have a lot of services and each of these services can be independently deployable to the production environment right and uh, then again is model around 
the business domain so there are you know concepts like domain driven design and you know bounded context and all that so you are modeled around the business domain business domain means one particular uh, business functionality that you can segregate from other functionalities so uh, that is the uh, the main, the definition of microservices so if you want to uh, learn more about uh, microservices that you know i will give you some references so uh, then the next question is why do you want to uh, move into the microservices right of course it is not like you know your boss is participated in the latest tech conference and he wants to use microservices so i mean you should not use microservices just because it would make your architecture fancy or your uh, whatever the, the system uh, become fancy right so i mean uh, that is not a case to move into or port into my microservices so what are the uh, real reasons so in this case uh, you have to uh, use i mean ask mainly three questions right what are you hoping to achieve so what is your system would be how many users would come into that how many users it uh, would be used in the system uh, your system in one year time in two years time is there any you know predictable increase right or have you considered any other alternatives uh, other than microservices you know there are a lot of other uh, Uh, so uh, i mean system architectures or software architectures that you can use have you considered any other alternatives right okay. uh, so and the other point is uh, the, th- the, th- the third question that you have to answer is that how do you make sure that it, the transition is working right uh, i mean how do you measure it right and uh, so there are things like you know fitness function uh, functions and all that that where you can do a proper measurement so we will be discussing those things uh, soon okay so uh, and the other thing is that do you have any of these requirements in your current uh, system or in, in your current architecture right uh, the most important thing is that is your product or services is saas based you know in saas so if you uh, service your system or service Uh, as a saas based uh, product then you know a- anyone at any time can uh, come at uh, come at your system or website or your application and get on board so you do not know uh, how many numbers would come up right because it's in in in, in the public so anyone can get on board right and uh, and uh, do you want to scale your system if the number of users are increasing do you want to scale it right and do you need elasticity so what do you mean by elasticity elasticity means that is there are you know certain hikes in the traffic to your application as an example let's say that you have built a restaurant system or a pos system for let's say uh, cafeterias like so you know during the dining hours of course there are high number of uh, requests that is coming into your system so this is called the Uh, elasticity the the sudden uh, the sudden burst so do you have that kind of requirement in your uh, system and do you need to roll out bugs quickly so in this quickly means how many like it's not like you know two or three months time we want to roll out bug fixes within like few hours so within like at least within two days right and do you need to have high re- uh, resiliency and robustness you know, whenever that some part of uh, your system fails that you do you need to have some kind of you know auto correcting or auto healing features right and uh, do you want your system to be resilient uh, to high traffic and all uh, and uh, do you want to scale your development i mean let's say one example there is you know third third uh, i mean in your uh, development effort uh, there's a requirements are coming so you need to scale your development across several countries so do you have that kind of a requirement in your system and do you have uh, any performance issues especially in your back end and more or less front end as well where you cannot solve within your current architecture so if you have like you know any one or many of these uh, questions answered yes so then you are have uh, high eligibility to move into the microservices i mean your effort that you are putting into moving uh, into the microservice would not get wasted
okay so if you want to uh, learn more about microservices so these are some uh, good resources that you can go through because you know this particular uh, lesson uh, or this uh, video is not about uh, learning microservices so microservice io is one uh, one place and uh, you know the mounting fowler's uh, blog and his website is uh, one good place and there's a nice book by uh, sam newman uh, so about building microservices so these are the resources so you can go there and learn uh, more about microservices so uh, i think you might have heard this uh, you know this term called microservices before so the question that i want to ask is that you know we have a certain uh, kind of like you know a diagram or a system diagram or i would say a software architecture that is this is a microservice you know you have a set of services of course you know you might be able to deploy these things independently uh, is this microservice the answer is no why this is more or less like a service oriented architecture if you are talking about you know the architecture pattern of this thing right because you know that you are sharing one database right so in microservices one of the principles is that you know you have to have uh, you know one database or one uh, data repository for each service or else you know you have i mean if if you must share a database uh, in between services it should be minimal i mean the number of services that call into one particular database should be minimal in this case you can see that each and every service is calling into the same database so i mean let's have an example that if you want to uh, change something in the database that you want to deploy all these services so that independently deployable clause would break in this case and apart from that the front end is also shared right so i mean if you want to change some uh, thing in the front end more or less that you would be changing more than one service in this architecture right so this is not a microservice architecture you know the the point that i want to emphasize here is that if you have set of services which run on you know different machines or different ports in the same machine it is not a microservice architecture right because in order to enable microservices architecture you have to have a lot of other things i will explain that thing in a while right so is microservice is easy no it is very complex and it is very cost as well i mean you have to incur certain cost in uh, microservice so in the, in the, in the domain or in the uh, in our domain that it considered as microservices tax right so what are the things that you have to do you have to have the observability right because you know since that you are dealing with lot of uh, independent services that it would be very hard to track your logs right so you have to have a certain very good uh, logging mechanism uh, distributed logging mechanism uh, in your if you are going ahead with microservices service discovery whenever a new a new service is uh, spin up or new service goes down right you have to have uh, service discovery facilities in your microservice architecture otherwise it would be a failure fault tolerance circuit breakers you know whenever the one particular service or set of services get down or get out of sync then you should have some kind of you know self healing mechanisms uh, and uh, to support that kind of a scenarios and uh, deployment build and deployment automation so i mean you cannot deal with micro uh, with microservices without automation it is kind of like must because you know whenever that you are dealing with um, you know let's say 150 200 or 250 services you know do your manual deployments as you are doing now is not going to be work is like it is unhuman you cannot do it so you have to have uh, build and uh, deployment automation and other thing is that testing automation so whenever that uh, you deploy into the production or into staging uh, you should be able to automate your testing right because with microservices what we are trying to achieve here is like you know like multiple uh, deployments let's say per day or per week right so i mean you cannot ask your qa team to uh, come and uh, do a qa manual qa testing uh, each time that you are Uh, doing the deployment because these deployments are much more fre frequent and particular uh, technical stacks i mean uh, if you are doing a monolith you might be stuck into like you know j2e or java or .net or something like that but in with microservices you have uh, you have the capability of uh, going into 
many different technologies which uh, which suits uh, that particular solution i mean let's have an example that if you uh, if you are trying to uh, come up with a service that is very highly memory intensive so then you can uh, select a technology a programming language or technology stack where it supports more memory intensive applications right so likewise that you can use polyglot technic uh, technology stack and technically capable teams right i mean technology is something that uh, since that this all these things are novel so your uh, your team your, your development team your devops team or whoever have to have the ability to adapt into uh, new technologies and move ahead right so uh, we have to start with microservices right uh so let's see one example that you know you do all these tests and you all these evaluations and you decided okay i'm going ahead and uh, i'm going i'm trying to move into microservices so we have to start it the first thing is that you need to find good support from your higher management like you know, because moving into microservices is not that easy so you have to have that you know your financial backups and everything get ready uh into uh up into your sleeves before you Uh, do the migration and you have to have good mentor or a consultant uh, who has the knowledge of uh, microservices and you know uh, i mean make sure that you would not fall into any uh, pitfalls and you have to develop a vision and strategy right what you are trying to achieve uh, by moving into microservices and define short term goals so this is very important i mean you cannot do like you know, something like this let's say one example you have a huge monolith and you can you cannot stop supporting that monolith and uh, you cannot say that to your users to your management okay we are moving into microservices you have to wait like you know one year until we get this thing ready you cannot do that right so you have to uh, come up with short term goals okay what are the areas that uh, we are trying to move into uh, microservices first of all right so uh, and the other thing is that you need to make you have to have some kind of mechanism uh, to measure that whether you have achieved that goal or not and communicating the change vision that you have to you know communicate it across uh, all your stakeholders okay we are going to do something like this and uh, change the org- organization culture so this i have emphasized be- before that you know your uh, your teams your technical teams uh, and everyone should adapt into new technologies uh, and uh, you know they should be robust about uh, you know learning new things and all and uh, and you should you know as an architect assume that you are an architect so you should anchor this approach right you should uh, spearhead uh, this uh, thing with your team right and uh, the other important thing is that you have to identify uh, the components for decompression so these are the methods that you can use for this thing uh for domain driven design uh, is one thing event storming is another uh, aspect and act action is another approach to identify your uh, components where you are trying to decompose so these things i mean i'm not going to uh, emphasize much in here so you can uh, go and find out more about these things uh, later on right so uh, as the next step so this i have taken from one of the sam newman's book this uh, diagram so what you have to do is there's uh, two axes in here one is uh, you know uh, the benefit of decompression right and the other axis is, is ease of decompression so uh, after you uh, identify your domain model using one of these technologies tdd event storming or act action then you have to uh, put that thing into a structure like this and uh, you know whatever that comes into this uh, square is the places is a nice place that where you can try out your microservices so what is this uh, square is the you know the the benefit of decompression is high and the ease of decompression is also high so in this case what you can do is you can convince your higher management or your clients that uh, by doing something very quickly Uh, and uh, it proves okay let's say one example uh, after moving into uh, let's say that in, as in in this example if i moving uh, if i moves my invoicing uh, part or invoicing module 
if I port my invoicing module as a microservice, okay, there is a there is this performance uh, gain in the application. So then you can you know they would also support uh, to port other you know hard parts into or hard modules into microservices as well. Okay, so the next uh, big question that we need to answer is where we should start this thing, right? So as uh, Martin Fowler said uh, famously, if, you, uh, if, if you're trying to do a big bang rewrite, so the only thing that you are certain is the big bang, right? I mean, it would collapse, it would like, you know, go everywhere, right? So what you should do is you should uh, start small, right? Uh, so we'll uh, go into uh, in the next video. I will be going through uh, these uh, migration patterns. So then I will explain you how to dissect uh, only one part of uh, your monolith and uh, apply one of these uh, design patterns or migration patterns and uh, how to move into uh, microservices. Okay, so that concludes uh, this uh, the first part of uh, this video. So hoping to see you in the uh, next.